Hello, mom. This is from dad. Woman opens door and boy greets her with note in hand. Shocking. A woman noticed a little boy standing on her porch when she answered the door at night. Hello, mom. This is from dad, he told her, extending a note. The woman's jaw dropped to the floor when she read it. Who could it possibly be at this time? Vanessa mumbled, setting down her fork. She was having dinner with her husband, Gomes, and their daughter, Mia, and she had just taken another serving of the delicious spaghetti when the doorbell rang. You guys carry on. I'll check who it is, Vanessa said as she got to her feet. She proceeded to the door and was greeted by a young boy who seemed no older than ten. Hello, mom, he said. Can I please come in? This is from dad, he added, extending a note to her. Vanessa laughed. Look, boy, I guess you've lost your way. I'm not your mom. But the boy shook his head. I know who you are. You're Vanessa Sanders, aren't you? Vanessa gasped, covering her mouth in shock. How? How do you know my name? Can I come in first? He asked again. I'm feeling cold. Vanessa looked at his tattered appearance and couldn't refuse him. Dad told me to give this letter to you, he said as he settled inside. Please read it. Gones left his dinner and came to the living room to check what had taken Vanessa so long. When he saw the little boy talking to Vanessa, he was confused. Honey, who is she? Just a minute, darling, Vanessa said as she opened the note to read it. Dear Vanessa, I would have never turned to you if it weren't for my illness. I can no longer care for our son, and it's past time he met his mother. Please don't reject him this time. This is a request. With love, Daniel. Vanessa, what is it? Gones asked as he saw her crumple the paper in her hands and give the little child a sad expression. Well, Gomes, it looks like he'll be staying with us tonight. What's your name, dear? She asked, facing the boy who resembled her to a T. My name is George, he said, smiling. Thank you for letting me stay here, Mom. Mom. Gomes' eyes widened. What's going on, Vanessa? Why is he calling you Mom? Gomes screamed loud enough to make George shiver. Suddenly, Mia came to the living room. Daddy, why are you yelling? Who is he? Oh, we just have a visitor, Vanessa replied. Please go and have dinner. Honey, okay. Daddy and I will join you soon. Okay, Mommy, Maya said and walked back to the dinner table. I'll tell you everything, Gomes, Vanessa murmured as Mia walked away. But first, please allow me to escort George to our guest room. You and Mia can carry on with your dinner. Vanessa hurriedly took George to the guest room and asked him to make himself at home. You're welcome to sleep here, George. I'll bring you some food here and please don't leave the room until I say so. I need to sort things out with Gomes. Is that clear? The little boy nodded. Okay. Vanessa brought him some dinner as she promised and asked Gomes to help Mia to bed first. When both kids were sleeping, Vanessa revealed why she allowed George to stay with him. You remember Daniel, she asked. My ex-boyfriend? Don't tell me, Vanessa. You're right, Gomes. George is Daniel's son and I'm his mother. Remember when I told you Daniel and I had broken up? I never told you that I was pregnant at this time. I wasn't ready to be a mother and he was too eager to keep the pregnancy going. So after I gave birth to the child, just to please Daniel, I basically ended my relationship with him and he took the baby and vanished. I guess I can't really avoid my past. There was a business card in the envelope. He's at the Oliver Memorial Hospital. Look, Vanessa, Gomes snarled. I don't care what occurred in the past, but I'm not letting that boy stay here. He is your fault and I will not pay for your mistakes. Please, Gomes, I can't just let him go. Daniel is ill. Can we have George stay with us for at least a week? A week? Hell no, Vanessa. In fact, I would not. Before Gomes could finish, Vanessa cut him off. I swear I'll talk to Daniel about it this weekend, and I'll make some plans for George. Gomes gave her a dirty look. Fine, but not a day more than a week. Thank you, Gomes. That day, though Gomes reluctantly agreed to let George stay in their house, deep down, he hated every moment of it. When Vanessa would return from work, she would spend time with both Mia and George. They would watch movies and go out for dinners, all this time reminding Gomes of how much he hated the boy and his wife's past. So, one day, when Vanessa was away for work, Gomes secretly dropped George at the hospital and drove back home. When Vanessa returned home and didn't find George, she was furious. What did you do to him, Gomes? Where's my child? She's in her room, Vanessa. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not talking about Mia, Gomes. Where the hell did you send George? Where is he? What do you mean by where he is? That dirtbag is right where he should be, at his dying homewrecker father's bedside. What? How could you just leave him there alone? He's a child, for God's sake, Gomes, and we had decided he'd stay with us for a week. How could you even? As if I care, he muttered angrily under his breath. 
I'm going to get him back, and you're not going to send him anywhere else this time. I'll make sure of that. Vanessa drove to the hospital, where she found George with Daniel. Oh, Daniel, she cried. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Vanessa, he started crying. Promise me you'll look after George when I'm gone. Please, why did your husband leave him here? I was planning on coming to see you this weekend, Daniel. I'm so sorry about what Gomes did, but what happened to you? How did you end up here? I don't have a lot of time, Vanessa. I know I'm dying, but I can't afford treatment. I require heart surgery and my odds of survival are slim. So please take George with you. That's a request. Look, Daniel, Vanessa said, holding his hands in her. I'm not going to make the same mistake again. I'm not going to abandon George, so you don't have to be concerned. And I'll also pay for your treatment. I promise you that nothing bad will happen to you. Vanessa brought George home and told Gomez she would look after George just like she would Mia. She also told him about paying for Daniel's treatment because she felt horrible about leaving him alone when he needed her. But Gomes was furious. If you do that, take care of Mia alone. I am leaving you in this house. What? Are you crazy? Think about Mia, at least. Look, I'll pay for Daniel's treatment and he'll be fine soon and he'll be able to look after George once he's recovered. I swear I won't bother you with it again. No woman wants to see her family torn apart like this. Gomes, please bear with me. Yes, Daddy, please don't go, Mia cried. George and I are best friends. Mommy loves us both. But Gomes didn't budge. Thank your mommy for making our home a complete mess, Mia. I hate her, and now she will be the one responsible for it. He packed his belongings and left, vowing never to return. A week later, he sent divorce papers and didn't demand custody of Mia, but he did ask for an equal share of the assets. Vanessa didn't hesitate to sign the papers because she knew that if Gomes truly cared about their family, he would not have abandoned her and Mia. She agreed to all his demands and was glad that he didn't demand for Mia's custody. Meanwhile, Daniel's surgery went well, and he was recovering fine. During this period, Vanessa had to become a single mother to both Mia and George, but she was content to have her kids with her. Thankfully, six months down the line, Daniel made a full recovery. By that time, Vanessa and Daniel's feelings had reignited and they grew as close as they were back in college. Let's go home, Daniel, she said when she went to pick him up at the hospital. Home, but where's George? At the place where we've all been waiting for you, our home, where our kids are. Vanessa brought Daniel home and told him about everything that transpired while he was in the hospital. It took a while for little Mia to adjust, but thanks to Daniel, who welcomed Mia like his own child, Mia managed to accept things easily, and when Vanessa and Daniel were confident that Mia and George were ready to accept them as parents, they tied the knot. The couple was content with the family they had been blessed with after all these years of separation and the fact that Gomes never interfered with their lives. Love is the foundation of a family. Daniel accepted Mia and raised her as a loving father. Home is where love is. Daniel, Vanessa, and their kids found a loving home in the house that Gomes had abandoned because he thought it was a mess. The desire to solely connect with people of the same race as oneself, like the desire to be biologically linked to one's children, can be damaging, according to Rebecca Roach, senior lecturer in philosophy at Royal Holloway, University of London. In a similar vein, Dr. Ezio De Nucci of the University of Copenhagen claims that the propensity to favor one's own offspring is a moral fault and that having children of one's own is immoral, because biological factors are normatively irrelevant in the context of parental love, the author claims that this is the case. In spite of these statements made by ivory tower academics, practically all parents around the world exhibit a passionate determination to safeguard and favor their own children. Does this imply that structural familial racism affects every family on the planet? Though it is typically expressed in language that is less concerning, this sentiment appears to be spreading. However, the preference for one's own children is almost widespread and is neither an illness, a condition, a sign of injustice, or a manifestation of racism. Most people refer to it as love instead, and the majority of people think it's a good thing. In actuality, all other forms of love have historically been compared to the love that parents have for their children. Is it strange that we look forward to hearing our own child play the piano the most when we attend a recital? Is it alarming that we hope the coach brings our child off the bench to give it his best effort when we attend a high school football game? These do not indicate racism or inequality in society as a whole. These are the things that actually connect the entire planet. They are what give practically every person on earth their own personal cheerleader and support network.